gal darn technology today, guys, right? Gal darn technology. So we are, I just threw in my phone and we're just gonna use that even though it's not the best option here, but I hate to, oh, mess around too much with this. So we're gonna just do this and let it roll and I'm gonna look on my computer uh, for questions from you guys. Thank you for being diligent with sticking with me. Yeah, I'm on my phone now, so I don't know what's going on with my computer. It's been bleeping at me that something in the USB is not working, so I don't know what I'm having issues with. I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I didn't wanna try it again and not be able to talk again, because then I just look like a an arse is what I look like. So, so we're talking pre-need and we we're talking about caskets and everything. So throw me questions about that. Wanted to chat for a minute about the disinterment of my dog. I don't know if I was ready for the, uh, the negativity about filming that, honestly. Um, we'll let you guys kind of get checked in. Um, here, but so yeah, I dug up my dog almost two weeks ago and it was a necessity. It had to happen. I didn't want heavy equipment coming in and tearing apart, at, you know, where he was and bones flying out. Like I was envisioning all the worst things. And so it just needed to happen. Um, and I've watched the video several times, you know, while editing it, watching myself and was critiquing myself. And I'm like, gosh, I think I was in such autopilot. I thought I would be really emotional that day and I wasn't at all. And so I think it was a defense mechanism a little bit that was happening like I'm totally psychoanalyzing myself that day. But it's funny because watching that, a lot of people are like, why didn't you just take the blankets he was wrapped in and put it in a box? Well, as Josh says, I can't send all that dirt to the crematory. And I think because of the knowledge we have of what crematory operators like and don't like and what is hard to cremate, we didn't want to send the blankets. Um, they don't like a lot of blankets and heavy stuff. It retards the cremation. Um, it can slow everything down depending what the material the blankets is made out of that can cause a problem. So we just took out that basic component of him. In the moment, I never even thought of the fact that his fur was still in there and that we were going to dispose of that. It never even phased me. It would be like someone's hair being in somewhere. Do you consider that the person or is that just kind of a off put part of them? I never even considered putting that in for cremation. It just seemed to be part of the muck of the stuff that was in the blankets. But people questioned me on that and I was like, gosh, you know, I never even thought about it. So it's it's interesting when people are not in the moment, the questions they ask and what they think they would have done. So I th it, it is, it's one of those, you know, you can't judge until you're in the moment for yourself. And I think that comes into play with everything we do, with every choice we make when we've lost somebody, with every heavy moment when it comes to all that. And um, yeah, so that's a lot of it. But yeah, people, and I, when I was editing, I told Josh, I said, gosh, I'm like taking the bones and I'm like just plopping them in instead of like laying them carefully. But that's that disconnect. If I sit and think about that being my beloved dog and that you can't do what you're doing. Just like if at work, if I sat and thought, oh, this poor baby, oh, and get caught up in it, you can't do your work. You have to disconnect from things to be able to do things. Maybe it's a, a curse. Maybe it's a blessing. I don't know, but that's just part of it. So I think I was just surprised by some of the response, but it, it I thought it was fascinating. My girls thought it was fascinating. We have had more talks before and after that 
about things. They know more than most adults know about death and cremation and burial and everything. And this was a great education for them in cremation. I don't love cremation. I can tell you that from this in the, just how it has played out that I now have this, I, I laid my dog to rest. Now I have my dog in this box and I have to figure out what to do with him. That wasn't part of the plan. That wasn't the plan I chose. So I'm not liking that as being part of it, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, my sister passed away in April, but her funeral wasn't until June. Where would she have been kept? Stephanie, was she cremated or was she buried? Why was there such a delay if she was being buried? Yeah, I. it does seem sterile. I think we seem cold sometimes, funeral directors do, because we do what we do. But for the most part, it's not our loss that we are dealing with. So it may seem emotionless, but we don't have emotions about it. It's not our person that we lost. So it's just different. Yes, great visitations. I have gotten the email, but um, as I was saying earlier, I haven't been in my office like at all, doing much here at all. Um, so I need to go through and, and get to emails and kind of get some stuff into order. She was buried. She passed away in Arizona and her funeral was in North Dakota. Did you view her? Did you view her or why was there a, he, like a two month delay in the burial? Welcome, Danielle. Yeah, Darius, I don't know. I don't know. Technology is fighting me. Can a parent get a death certificate or, or does it have to be the next to kin? Karen, it depends on the state. In Michigan, where I am, death certificates are public record. Anybody can get a death certificate. Other states, it may be only immediate next to kin. Or some states have a um, two different versions, one with cause of death and one without. You can get the one that's public, but you, can, you have to be an immediate next to kin to get the one that is the cause of death. So it just depends on the state you're in. I'm being cremated. I'm putting all my little dogs that I've had put with me. Yep, they can't go with you into the retort, but you can. they can mix them with you after the cremation. Good morning from everywhere. You guys are all over the place. I love it. Um, I have not met Dr. G. Oh, doc, who's Dr. G? Is that the autopsy person that you guys tell me about a lot? when her daughters could all get to North Dakota, nor be in. Um, yeah, we're seeing that a lot, Stephanie, where families are delaying the funeral to try and make it accommodating to them. I don't get this trend. Death is not accommodating. Um, it is not something that you can delay doing it's you need to stop and remember that person and make it happen but it's happening a lot more and it's a bit silly is my opinion um with that people are waiting and having bodies held for long long periods of time it's not respectful I don't think but that's just my opinion um they would have just kept her if she was embalmed in our casket they would have just kept her off in a room somewhere. Um, yes, this is live rock stop. So it just depends on the funeral home. Some of them have cool areas that they can put them into. Sometimes there's racks um, that they'll use. It just depends. Yes, some funeral homes have storage fees. You're taking up space. Some funeral homes don't have that space to take up. So after so many days, they start charging a per day storage fee. And it can get costly. It can be fifty to a hundred dollars per day to store somebody. So yeah, it can get quite costly. Um, yes, I have never met Dr. Jan Garavaglia. Dr. Jan, Dr. Jan. 
Garabaglia. Garabaglia. Mm -mm, I have never. I'll have to look into her more. I love you guys send me so many things to watch and view if I had all the time in the day <laughs> to watch and view them all. So I'm getting there. Um, and JW just posted and about St. Louis. He's down in the loo. I've got a lot of viewers down on the loo. And yes, there was a school shooting there this week. Um, I have not seen a lot of news about it, which is interesting. Um, but I haven't been on much either. Um, Josh and I did some over on the Ick Factor channel. We did a kind of responding to some movie scenes and stuff from cremation like scenes and graveside scenes and everything. So we have to find some more of those to respond to um, because those are fun. <laughs> some of them are so comically made up. It's like, did you not consult with the funeral director? Like, hey, movie people, TV people, just email me. Just, just write me. Pay me five dollars, send me a coffee, and let's consult her something. It would I would love to help you make this more realistic. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Um every funeral I've been to in the last 10 years was 10 was months later because they were all at national cemeteries. Yeah, our local national cemetery doesn't have a huge delay. Um, there we can typically get in same week, but there are some that take months for you to be able to schedule into. We have two plots. Josh is great. He's great. It's hunting weekend this weekend, so he's going to deer camp. How much does a funeral director make? Uh, it depends on a lot of variables. Um, with funeral directors, you can have a lot of items that are part of your salary, you know, cell phones, clothing allowance, living quarters, vehicles, all these things that can be part of what is considered your salary. Um, so it just depends. It depends on if you're hourly, if you're salaried, how big the funeral home is, what your work schedule is, what part of the country you're in. During my dad's visitation, he had cotton stuffed in his ears. I thought that was odd. Do you know the reason for that? I could only guess at some different things. He was probably leaking out of his ears for some reason. I don't know what his cause of death. If he had an autopsy, there could be a lot of variables there of, as to why that might happen. So I would need a lot more information to give a for sure answer. I've seen a grave where a man had his leg amputated and buried first. He passed away recently and was buried in the same grave. Yeah, um... I haven't seen it too often where people will cremate their amputation ahead or bury it ahead. I guess I don't know. I run into a ton of people that, you know, had amputations that they kept. Usually they just dispose of them at the hospital. My dad passed away in July and then my brother passed uh, September 5th. My mom just couldn't do it. Two funerals back to back. My brother was cremated a month after he died. A month is a bit long, but depending on cause of death, you know, he could be at the medical examiner for a week and then trying to get results to be able to release him for cremation or, you know, a lot of different variables. Coming up with funds can sometimes delay funerals and delay cremation. Oh, Doug, no, this is a great one. When I prearranged my mother's grave site, the cemetery, not the funeral home, sold us the casket in the vault. This seemed unusual. So it's probably a large corporate cemetery of some kind, and they work on commission. So the more they sell, the more money they make. And so when the time comes, they'll have to deliver that casket over to the funeral home for you know, casketing and getting the person ready. There are some cemeteries that not present themselves as funeral homes, but they use the words all set. Everything's all set. Um, we have a corporate one in our area and people are heavily confused by 
the fact that everything is not all paid for because they paid, they did that. They took care of everything at the cemetery for the cemetery portion. And they also got a casket and a vault. They believe that this is all set, that they are done paying for things when that's only a portion of what's going to be handled because the funeral home still has to be involved. We work with a lot of people that get very upset because it was a little bit of a misdirect at the time. And they thought that everything was all set. There would not be any more charges. And then all of a sudden they have still eight to 10,000 or whatever the case that they have to pay. It's not a great conversation. And it's very hard conversation. Um, but it's just what it is. We, you know, there's no way to, to change. Robert, my cousin is a freelance mortician like you. Can a body get moldy as opposed to decompose? Yes, they do get moldy. Um, sometimes if we store and then we're not burying for months, you can go in and there's like a white fuzz that starts growing over the body. Sometimes greenish, but they get this mold on them. It is a moist environment and mold grows. And sometimes you just have to wash off the mold and are good as you know good to go again and you can show them but yeah the mold it's it's just weird it's like this peach fuzz stuff that can grow on it's it's an odd thing to see if you are buried at a national cemetery does the government cover the burial expenses like opening closing a vault and marker yes so when you get buried in a national cemetery if you are approved for that the things that are of no expense is the grave space the headstone which they dictate which one you use typically, um, the opening and closing, and the vault. It's a basic grave liner. So you can purchase a um, private vault for, to be dropped off from a vault company if you want one that seals or anything like that. But there is quite a cost savings for veterans to be buried in a military veteran cemetery or national cemetery. Would you recommend families seeing loved ones before they're casketed? My mother was killed in December and they allowed us to see her shortly after she came from forensics. I think it's, sometimes you want to see them sooner just to make it a little more reality. But allowing the funeral director to at least clean them up. As I've said a lot of times, the blood and the dirt and things from different death scenes, from car accidents, from whatever can make the person look a lot worse than they really are. I mean, they're dead, they can't get worse than dead. But I mean, in the terms of their condition and their injuries. So a bath is, you know, can do a lot. So even just allowing the funeral home to give them a bath. But if they've had an autopsy, what we've run into in our area, they're not super sutured up. There's maybe a couple stitches to hold the skull closed and maybe the chest closed, but they're not all sutured up. So allowing the preparation to help allows their head to be fully closed, leaking to stop, all of it. So I am one for waiting, but I also understand wanting to see them as soon as possible. When my niece was killed, we, we wanted to see, when can we see her? Because it's all just a concept. Like, Someone's told you something's happened, but you're like, mm, really did it? Until you see to actually know, there's no way to know. So I understand wanting to see and have something tangible to connect these words to as you're being told them. And I'm using my hands a lot today. We had my soulmate cremated, then did the celebration of life just recently in the way he wanted up, our local legion. Well, it sounds like you guys had had a conversation maybe and, and knew kind of what would work best for you um, in that way. So that's really good you had that conversation. Um, my niece was murdered and um, down in Ohio. So I've got a couple different videos on it. 
So there are not coroners in Michigan. We do not have coroners. So it's the medical examiner, the pathologist in Grand Rapids examined my husband's heart transplant biopsies for rejection. It's kind of funny. Um, it's good that they looked into those just to see what was maybe going on. He was cremated because it would have cost over 25000 to get his body home. Where was he at, Sarah? I missed the beginning of your story. Why would it have cost $25,000? That should, nothing should cost that much. Apparently Lincoln's body had mold on it 35 years after his death. It's very famous where it was still there. Um, yeah, so it's amazing how some disinterments they've done and the people look you know, phenomenal. Like, was it the Big Bopper? Um, we've heard a lot of really big ones. So there's no way to know for sure what's going on underground. If someone's completely decomposed, if they're still, you know, looking okay, if they're bloated, if they're mummified, if they're whatever, we have no idea. It's, a, it's kind of a big mystery unless we start disinterring all the bodies everywhere. He was in Houston and we live in Kentucky. So the only change in cost with that would have been a flight and the transport, which would have been like $700 or whatever. So the only additional cost just because he was in Houston would have been the flight or driving him back to Kentucky. It would have been the exact same cost as having him die in your hometown just plus a flight so maybe a thousand total um for the the box that he would have had to been shipped in plus the flight so it would not have cost that much extra for them ever had any body parts fall off during prep i've had body parts that are barely holding on by a little piece of tissue um just because of let's say just as an example um, you know, cuts on the person and there's some tissue kind of hanging off and they're just hanging on by one little piece of tissue. So sometimes those are easier to snip off and then deal with the missing tissue because you can't reattach it all and it look normal by any means. Um, I've never had like an ear fall off or a nose fall off or an arm fall off. I've had them just hanging though by pieces of tissue. The bag that the organs are stored in, which are placed in the cavity after the autopsy, is it biodegradable? No, it's typically just a biohazard or a plastic bag. The cost of flameless cremation or alkaline hydrolysis is the same as water or is the same as flame cremation. Um, and it depends on the location, just like you can go to 10 different funeral homes and get 10 different costs for flame cremation, it's gonna be the same thing that there could be different charges for alkaline hydrolysis. Yes, Doug, so that's very typical too. Cemeteries will have crypt sections where the vaults are pre-installed, they're all ready to go, the person is just laid down in after they die. They're all put in the ground. Typically, if it's a crypt section, they may be double depth, like a lot of uh, national cemeteries and such. They put them in double depth, lay them all in ahead of time, you're good to go. You're welcome, you're welcome. How would you rate my expertise in restorative artistry? For instance, a decapitation from a high-speed biking accident. It's not something you see all the time. Decapitation doesn't happen a ton. Um, even in high-value funeral homes, I don't know the last time I've seen a decapitation. Like it's been very minimal in my career decapitation. That's It's just not a common it's going to take a very extreme scenario for something like that. 
Is the Viscera bag cremated as well? And does the plastic interfere with the retort? Yes, um, it's all cremated. And typically your heat is high enough for something like a plastic bag like that, that it's not gonna cause a problem. Clean an in-ground grave marker. Oh, I don't know what's being asked there. How is it possible for a cemetery to become abandoned? So it depends if a church was the one running it, if a township was running it. You know, township ones or that have municipalities like township, city, and everything are not going to typically just get abandoned. They may stop caring for them though if they are full. They may do less care. They may only do maintenance once a month rather than every week or a couple times a week. And so that's gonna be dependent. If it was a privately owned cemetery, it can get abandoned. If it's a church owned and the church closes, it can be abandoned. Um, they try and put into place where you have to have like a some kind of an insurance policy. So if the business is not operational, then that insurance policy can go to, into a trust to care for the you know longevity care of the cemetery. But that doesn't always happen either. Um, it's a fascinating thing. But if you look, a lot of times the ones that are abandoned are privately held. Um, corporations or things like that not typically city township run ones am I gonna do anything fun for Halloween no <laughs> um, my hearse fest video is gonna go is gonna be live on that night well it's not a live video but it's gonna premiere that night I just edited that quick yesterday just to give you guys a little glimpse, a little glimpse of Hearst Fest. We were, we went and it, we were not able to be there for very long because we had morning activities with the kids. So by the time we drove the two hours over there, it was later afternoon, getting time for them to close. And so we weren't able to be there as long as we wanted, but I gave you a little glimpse of it. It was still fun. Might the cemetery give me permission to clean an in-ground grave marker when there is no remaining family? Yeah, I don't think you need permission from the cemetery, really. You should be able to go in and clean it. I'm watching in memory my sister who was one of my first, oh, who's your sister? Mr. Big Will, who's your sister? What was her name on here? Oh, Jason, I hope you're in a much further ahead time zone than 9.30 a.m. like we are here. <laughs> Across the Detroit River. Nice. Um, I'm working on, I know I brought this up about a year ago or so about podcasts, but I'm working, I'm gonna start working on some podcasts, I think. I have an idea for one, and I'm really excited about it. And um, yeah, so I may start delving into podcasts. I will not stop doing videos, but yeah, I think I may do some other. What is your comments pertaining to formaldehyde free embalming or do you appreciate the old trusty formaldehyde fluid? So this was a conversation this week um, with some embalmers about how, you know, formaldehyde is an organic substance. So it's natural. It is carcinogen causing, but pretty much what isn't nowadays, I feel like. Um, so... I think if we're going to do the act of pre temporary preservation, let's just do it well. And if all we can use is, um, you know, uh, essential oils and such, then if it's not doing what it needs to do, then why do it? 
I don't know. And some of the chemicals I've used, we've used some green chemicals and they're really thick. They're hard to go through the, mach the machines. So I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about some of it. I want it to be done well if it's going to be done. She was the one who turned me on. Oh, Mr. Big Wheel. What was her? Am I missing? Did you tell me what her name was? We were asked to leave the room when my mom died at home in hospice. Where she was for about 10 minutes before her body was removed. What occurred in the room before her body was taken out? They might have just been getting her transported onto the cot and rolling her and, and getting her off the blankets she was on onto one from the mortuary. No idea. I, I mean, I, I wasn't there, but that's typically all we're doing in there is trying to maneuver the person and get them onto the cot to bring them out to the other space. Sometimes the rooms are, are not big enough to facilitate having people in there with the two people from the funeral home and the cot and everything. So there's not anything salacious happening, you know, nothing naughty is happening, shouldn't be, but you're welcome to watch what they're doing. You don't have to leave. They may ask you to, you can say, no, I am going to stay. But they want to make sure that they think that sometimes that you're going to be upset by you moving around their loved one and rolling them and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, the body options for disposition is growing every year. It's amazing. When am I going to write a book? So I have three started. Oh. <laughs> I need to go on a book hiatus. I told Josh this. I need to like just get like an Airbnb, go to the woods and write for a couple days and see what I can accomplish in a couple days of of go, of doing, you know, like how much chunks on these books can I get? I need to pick one and focus on it. I have a fiction, a nonfiction, and a children's book. <laughs> so I need to pick one, focus, get it done. Go to the next, get it done. It's hard. It's hard. Um, and I do. I get in the mode, and I'll write some, and then I stop. I think I don't make enough time for myself because that's what we do. Um, I get told that a lot. I focus on other people, and I get... I just am doing for other people instead of focusing on my stuff. It's a problem. What advice could you give someone who is interested in working in the funeral industry, but they're a bit nervous being alone with the deceased? So that's going to comfort, that comfort love is going to come over time. So we have been trained as we're growing to feel a discomfort almost around 10 people. And the only time we're really around them is when there are loved ones, when we're growing up, unless you grow up in a funeral home or something. So you definitely have to retrain everything about yourself, but it takes you seeing people that are dead over and over to retrain your brain, to understand that them bleeding does not hurt them that things are different than what we have grown to believe. So it just takes retraining your brain over a little bit of time working at the funeral home. And all of a sudden you'll be comfortable being alone with them. Definitely is going to take some comfort, but you'll be surprised how fast you can retrain yourself. Three billion books, not three billion, Lisa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Margaret, I would have to see the pad to know exactly what it was. Thank you. Um, Josh and I like each us together too. <laughs> Are cremations done differently in other parts of the world? Yeah, I mean, if you go to India and they do open air cremations where they're out in the public so anybody can watch, that's definitely very different than here. Um, all right, just a couple more questions and then we'll have to get signed off. My six-year-old seven comorbidities and refused to get the vaccine. She had problems with blood clots and was afraid of getting them. 
Well, it's a very common thing right now with all of the information coming out. Um, we just don't know. The big boomer was fascinating. How much do bodies swell after an autopsy? They don't. A body should not swell after an autopsy. Yeah, so when you take all the organs out of a body, internal organs, and you put them back in a bag, they're all going to be compacted together. So it's going to extend out the abdomen a little, and then she may have had plastic undergarments on, which is going to add some bulk underneath her clothing too. How do they get the temperature high enough outside to cremate in India? From what I've read, they use some specific oils and things to get the heat up. Um, I did, did I do a two minute on this? I did a little video on this, I think last year or the year before when they were having such high death spikes during COVID and they were doing the open air and I'm trying to remember now, I'm still not okay for my concussion guys. I'm still like, my brain can't get information even though it's in there. <laughs> I can't get to it. Uh, was it like animal oils or some type of specific oils that they use? Yeah, um, so crazy, Robert, because I just worked a family this last week. Um, the son-in-law was from Ireland. And so we talked about Ireland and funerals there and everything. And I had been trying to talk to funeral directors pre-COVID about coming over and working in Ireland. And it just hasn't happened yet. So I would still like to come. It is high, high, high on my bucket list to come to Ireland. All the eyes. I want to come to Iceland, Ireland, and Italy. Those are my, why they're all the eyes, I'm not quite sure. But I would love to. How did you get a concussion? Well, I fell in an elevator. And we don't know if I passed out. We don't know if I tripped. There's no memory for about eight hours in there of anything. Um, I remember getting on the elevator and then that was it. So they're checking my heart, they're checking everything, trying to see what made me pass out because they don't know. And I hit my head hard and sliced it open. I'm gonna have a weird little, like right here is where it is. <laughs> I'm gonna have a weird little, weird little thing probably there for the rest of my life because <laughs> I'm going to have a scar kind of giving me a little colic. So Kevin, that's a good idea. So Mr. Big Wheel, let's talk about this. So have you ever thought of traveling the world and giving info on burial customs? So I looked into proposing a TV show idea on this, but you know how hard it is to propose a TV show idea. It just, I don't even, I got on, I tried to send some information to places. It was like a stone wall because I think it would be fascinating, like an American funeral director in Ireland, an American funeral director. And I had this concept after I went to England and worked there with Udens and thought, God, this would be amazing to do to go to all these places like and see their death culture and what they do and kind of showcase on every episode is a different culture. How fun would that be? I think it'd be fascinating. I think it would be so cool to get to see those. So there's my my show idea, patent pending. <laughs> but I think it would be fascinating um, to do that. So like a Nas National Geographic sort of thing or whatever. Um, but I tried to get the idea. Maybe this will be, you guys go write everybody and say, send Carrie to India. <laughs> Seriously. All right. I got to sign off. I got to go actually get to an appointment. But thank you guys for joining. And thank you for having some grace on whatever's going on with this stupid microphone thing. I've got to do some videos this afternoon and we'll see if it works then. If it works then. So I am today wearing, you guys see this? Fine Mortuary College. Carrie gets to teach. So starting in um, the February class, I will be teaching a class for them. 
remotely, of course. Um, they're in Boston area, so I am super excited to be getting to do that. So yeah, I forgot I had this on. Um, they sent this to me, and so today I was like, whoop, I'm gonna represent fine, yay. So I'm very excited about that. And you guys ask me all the time, when are you gonna start teaching? So I'm gonna start teaching. So I'm very excited about it. Nothing else will change. I'll still be doing everything else. Why not get another ball and throw it in the air, right? Right? Why not take on more? Who needs who needs sleep? Guess not me. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Um, send me questions if you have them. Carrie at carriethemortician.com. I'll see you guys later. Bye.